I wasn't necessarily expecting to read from my chapter today. There's actually a meeting I have to go to at McGill, and I'll just tell you briefly what it's about, because it's very relevant to this gathering. For the past four years in the Faculty of Education, we've had a very arid, um, deadening atmosphere at the Faculty of Education due to the leadership that, that we've had, which recently changed. And one of the, I mention that because one of the uh, first things that erupted as that person was making their way out and a new person was coming in was we started an arts-based group. That was what exactly happened as this person was heading out the door was we decided we need the pictures back on the wall, we need the students work to be up, we need to talk about arts in our faculty again and bring life back into what was a really deadening um, atmosphere so spiritually and in, in another way. So I just mentioned that but that's the meeting I have to go to is because the, the last time we met was in the summer and we need, this is our next meeting. So I apologize for having to, having to read and then, and then to run. So my piece is, um, I was seeing with great interest to, to all of you, but especially with rela relation to this piece, to, to Adrian, because this narrative, uh, it's called Old Narratives Break Apart, really marked the departure between an old way of writing for me and then moving into a newer way of writing. And what that involved for me was my relationship with my mother. And so in the course of doing my doctorate, I had done a lot of work, I'd taken a lot of curriculum courses and I did a lot of writing on the side that wasn't my doctorate, it was too risky at that time I guess for me to do it as part of my doctorate, but I did do a lot of it on the side and a lot of it was an autobiographical writing and many of the narratives centered around my mother. So I will just read you one of the shorter ones that's in here that's typical I think of, of the, the writing that I did before. Tea meant, and it's a childhood narrative, tea meant tea, coffee, cookies and cakes spread out on fluted fancy plates on top of crocheted doilies and hot beverages served in rural Dalton, china cups with saucers. It's high English tea, or rather high Scottish tea, because most of the relations that we regularly visited, I now realize, were labor relations. Friends whom my father had met through work in the shipyards. My mother, slim and well-dressed, sat poised on the edges of chairs or couches, sipping her tea while holding the saucer circumspectly to catch any wayward drops. Don't make any more work for the hostess, a legitimate form of female solidarity. I, on the other hand, inelegant with no apparent need of dessert, luxurated in the tasty treats, then retired to a corner with a Nancy Drew mysteries. And so the, I guess there's, there is various things in this passage. One is the way that I construct myself, and then of course the other way is, is how I construct my mother. Um, I quote Madeleine Grumet, the task of thinking back through our mothers is an archeology span not of them, but of our relation to them. And so here my mother is the kind of demonized in, the, in this passage, she's the one who's overly elegant, I'm inelegant, but there's also inaccuracies. For instance, I say that the relations that we went to visit were uh, from my father's side, assuming that he was the one who, who had cultivated all these relationships where, where I grew up. But in fact, that's not true. And so part of the, the, uh, where this chapter comes from is it comes from a conversation that I had with someone and where that someone probed me in uncomfortable ways. Um, kind of like think of all the interviews that we do with participants trying to get them to, to push the boundaries of their thinking. Well, my boundaries were pushed that day, certainly, and, try, and challenging my notion of and my construction of, of my mother. And what that resulted in was life history work with my mother. I launched a life history work with my mother, and I even showed her some of these, some of these narratives. And as a result of that, I realized that there was a, my mother had a story. My mother had a, was a person. My mother was not the person that I had constructed in my, in my childhood imagination, and that, that lived on in my imagination, in my relationship with her for most of my adult life, which is really quite astounding. So to imagine oneself as one's mother rather than one's, as oneself, this is what the purpose of this piece is. And it really is just a launching piece. Like it's really trying to leave those old narratives behind, to bring them forward, not for the purpose of, because you know, they're carefully crafted and, they're, and people like to read them. I showed them to a few other people. They're carefully crafted, but they don't represent where I wanted to go and where I wanted to be with, with my mother. So one of the things that I think is distinctive about this work is that I was able to, a lot of these, a, a lot of revisiting work happens on the part of feminists with their mothers, but often it happens post-mortem after their mother has passed away. But I think uh, one of the things I was really grateful for was I was able to do this work while she was still alive and before she got 
Alzheimer's because shortly after she did she did get Alzheimer's and so have a whole boxes and boxes of tapes that I've you know recently uh, re-listened to and so where this chapter ends is 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 who was Margaret Elizabeth Strong nay Cunningham an embodied voice and not me an individual with her own history and experience of love and loss this is the story that I will need to write and in fact that's the story that I have started to write I did start to write it in a course I taught a seminar and curriculum inquiry course this uh, past winter term and I did a lot of writing along with the students as they were doing their uh, writing and projects. I, this is the project that I wrote towards. And then in the summertime, um, I also wrote a chapter in uh, Claudia Mitchell has a new book, another book. She always has books on girlhood. And so I happened to be, she invited me to, to, uh, to be a chair briefly, like it was really ephemeral, uh, an ephemeral appearance. And from that came a chapter in, in this book, but I was really grateful because it allowed me the opportunity to start to write the narrative in the way that I guess, I guess that not the way that I perceived my mother, but the way that she perceived herself and that she would have wished her story to be told. And so that was the exercise that I've started to go through. And, and I don't, unfortunately, I, as I said, I wasn't, pla I knew I had this meeting, so I wasn't planning to speak today. Otherwise I would have brought a little bit of that narrative just to share with you, but that's what I'm working on presently. Thank you. <laughs>